Hi everyone, it is the end of the closed beta for Paleo and we have just entered the open beta phase of development and I wanted to take this moment to reflect on my experiences playing this game over the last week. I started playing the closed beta the second the servers went online and I have spent a lot of time playing the game up to the point of making this video. I have a lot of thoughts, both good and bad, and I want to go over them. This video isn't meant to serve as a suggestion for whether or not you should play and or support this game, it's just my thoughts and opinions from my own individual perspective. Additionally, I have a lot of thoughts. General things I'm going to be talking about through this review are things I liked, things I didn't like, community reactions and expectations, and things I hope to see changed over the course of the open beta. So let's get started. I made a first impressions video the day after Paleo released that went over all my thoughts from the first 5 hours that I played on the first day, and the general summary of that entire video is, I absolutely loved it. And now that I've played even more hours over multiple days now, I love it even more. This is honestly the most fun I've had playing a game in a very long time. The most recent times I felt totally engrossed in a game like this was a single day in 2022 with the release of Ender Dragons for Guild Wars 2, two days in 2019 when I played through the Halo Reach campaign for the first time ever, and then about a two week period in 2019 when World of Warcraft Classic released. I've been obsessed with Paleo over the last week and I feel like I will continue to obsess over it in the immediate future. Obviously at some point it will die down, but it feels good to be loving a game as much as I am loving Paleo right now. It kinda makes me feel young again, like when I played World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, Skyrim, Portal 2, and other games for the first time ever. And largely, I am pretty happy with my experience in the game so far. I obviously have several issues that I will talk about later, but let's talk about everything I love so far. First are the skills in Paleo. There are 8 total skills in the game, fishing, cooking, gardening, mining, hunting, bug catching, foraging, and furniture making. I have not had the time to interact with each of these skills and have learned a lot about them, and overall, I enjoy each and every one of them. I originally thought these skills were pretty fast to level up, and while that is partially correct, it's a lot more expansive than I thought. Basically, as you level up each skill, you unlock more items connected to that associated skill. Or once you reach level 10, you have kind of maxed out that skill in the sense of you have unlocked almost everything you can purchase through that skill's guild merchant, and then you unlock weekly missions that are connected to those skills. But leveling up the skills doesn't end at level 10, and you can actually level them up all the way to 50 where with each level up, you get some bonus skill medals that you can spend at the aforementioned guild merchant to buy other special rewards, and then you also get guild medals from doing the weekly missions as well. And I think this is fantastic. You have an initial sense of progression that doesn't take too long in order to unlock everything the skill has to offer, and once you unlock everything, you still have some long-term progression that kind of is just there to increase your player level, which I guess you could call a symbol of dedication or playtime to the game, and then you also get some extra medals to help buy some stuff outside of completing the weekly missions. It is a great balance of being quick for people who want the basics and being intensive for people who want to go far. Now for each skill individually, first, I really love the fishing in this game. It's a lot like fishing in Guild Wars 2 or Stardew Valley, where there are a ton of different fish to catch around the world that requires you to go to different places at different times and, like Guild Wars 2, use different bait. As far as the minigame itself goes, it is pretty fun. As far as I know, this is a pretty unique take on fishing where I personally haven't seen any other game do fishing like this. I would say the minigame is pretty easy, but I know some people find a lot of challenge in it, and I definitely find a lot of challenge in catching the more difficult fish, which is a good thing in my opinion. There are a variety of different bodies of water in both of the zones in the game so far, where there are fish that are unique to each of those bodies of water, and some fish that can only be caught at certain times of the day. There are also only fish that can be caught without using any bait, and there are a lot of fish that can be caught by using one of the two respective baits that are currently in the game. And I just love the system so much, there's a lot of fish to go out and catch, and I've had a ton of fun working with the skill. This skill, just like almost every other skill in the game, benefits greatly from playing with other people, where it becomes a lot easier for you to catch fish when you're fishing around other people, and also with fishing having a tiny bit of downtime as you wait for a fish to bite, it provides a good opportunity to chat with other people, and I have had fun talking with other people while fishing. Second, cooking in this game is pretty fun. It is surprisingly interactive and includes several different mini-games where you need to chop vegetables, raw, dough, mix things, stir things, and so on. This is one of the two skills that I have spent the least amount of time doing, so I don't know everything that is available for this, but it seems like a lot. There are a bunch of different cooking stations that allow you to do different parts of cooking, and just overall, it is super fun. You can find cooking recipes all around the world, and it's always fun to stumble upon them, because some are decently hidden. And cooking is incredibly important because of the focus mechanic in the game, where you can eat food to gain focus, which increases the amount of experience you gain in every skill. Or if you're wanting to make sure you're getting as much experience as possible as you play, you want to make sure you have focus up, which means you will need a lot of food. And I think this skill is one of the ones that benefits the most from doing it with other people, where cooking is a lot faster with multiple people, 
and each person that participates gets the same amount of food from cooking from one set of ingredients. So it kind of multiplies the amount of total food produced depending on how many people participate. Gardening in this game is also super fun and is a pretty decent take on this type of gameplay where you get plots of soil and then you have to till them, and then you put seeds in them, and then you water them. There are different fertilizers that you can put into the soil to help buff up your crops, and then crops will buff each other up. This mechanic kind of falls under the realm of being interesting for people who enjoy min-maxing, but I obviously still get a lot of joy out of gardening without min-maxing. But people have come up with plot layouts where you can put certain plants in certain places that will fully buff up all of the plants in your garden. But with my simple acts of planting crops and taking care of them, I have enjoyed this skill and have earned a decent amount of gold. However, this is the first skill that I have a couple of issues with. First is that you only have 9 soil plots that you can buy and each plot only lets you plant 9 singular plants. I haven't bought any blueberry bushes or apple trees yet, but I know they take up multiple spots. Or first, I would love to be able to plant more than 81 different crops. I believe there's a limit on this in order to prevent people from making too much money from gardening and that is probably for the best because we know how people can be in games when it comes to making money. But I would definitely love the option to have more in the future. And second, I wish blueberry bushes and apple trees didn't have to be planted on soil, where they could maybe have an additional limit on each of them that is separate from the limit of the soil plots. Additionally, I would love if blueberry bushes and apple trees were permanent, with the option to remove them of course, but that you wouldn't have to replant them like you do with other plants. I know this doesn't make a lot of sense with blueberry bushes because they do die over time, but I'm pretty sure apple trees last a long time and I would love to build a sprawling apple orchard on my plot of land. Finally, this skill is also great to do with other people, but it suffers in a significant way that I will talk about when I discuss the housing plots later. And the fourth skill is mining. Now this skill is pretty basic, and there really isn't too much to say. There are a bunch of different things you can mine around the map, and you hit them with your pickaxe to get loot. I like the skill, I've had fun exploring the maps. The progression that is present with each skill where you level up your tools is great for this one as well. This skill is another example of how great of a social game Paleo is because it benefits greatly from playing with other people, where everyone gets loot from mining and is faster to break things with more people. And yeah, overall, nothing too major to say. It's good and it would be hard to make mining bad. The fifth skill is hunting. This skill is the one that I've spent the most time doing in the game, partially because it is super fun and partially because it nets you quite a bit of gold. Where the gold you can gain from the skill has been nerfed, but it still seems to be one of the two best ways to get gold in the early game. But as far as the mechanics of the skill goes, it is very solid. I have a lot of fun roaming around the countryside, shooting animals, and tracking down the more difficult animals that I can't kill in one shot and who run away from me. The skill does suffer quite a bit from server issues, which has become more and more prevalent as more people have been invited, but it's not too big of an issue for me at least. Beyond the skill itself being super fun and super lucrative, it is also super fun with friends. However, a major issue that I have with the skill is how difficult it is to hunt with other people. We see this issue in a variety of ways. We're kind of unconnected from this is how animals get scared when people go near them, which is a good mechanic, but it can be frustrating if you're hunting animals as somebody who you are not playing with passes by them and spooks them. This is especially frustrating with the magical animals and all of the choppas. But overall this isn't too big of an issue because they're just playing their game and you're playing yours. It's not your world, it's everyone's. But the bigger issue comes when you're working together with other people to kill animals together. Where the mechanic is that if you shoot in the general direction of an animal, it will give you credit for the kill when it dies. But with animals I get one shot, as in most of them if you get better arrows, it can be difficult for everyone to get a kill together if one person fires and kills the animal before the second, third, or so on person fires an arrow at or near the animal. Where this is difficult when you are organized and chatting with people over a voice call, but it becomes even harder with other people around the map. Where it's difficult to time your shots together with people that you aren't talking to over voice chat. And this all makes hunting a skill that is better to do by yourself than with other people. Where I think there are a variety of different solutions to this. To name a couple of ideas, you could have animals drop their items for everyone in a party as long as one person in the party kills the animal. Or you could have the animal drop parts for everyone who is within a specific range of the animal instead of it being dependent on your arrow. Or you could have animals drop parts for everyone who is within the set range and has fired an arrow within a specific time frame. I think all these could be problematic if you take into account that some people might leech off of other people, but that's not really a concern for me because they are just ruining the game for themselves. The sixth skill is bug catching. This is pretty similar to both hunting and fishing, where this doesn't have as many of the issues that hunting does, and this is also a super cool skill that I have had a lot of fun with. I love running around the map looking for bugs and capturing them. This is probably the skill that I have spent the most time doing with other people as I've gone on many bug hunting parties looking for rare bugs and whatnot. This skill suffers a little bit from random people spooking bugs you're going for, 
but that is just the nature of a multiplayer open world game, and it's obviously never their fault unless they are purposely trying to mess with you, which is not something I have experienced yet. The seventh skill is foraging. This combines two activities into one. The first is cutting down trees, which is pretty much the same as mining, but this is probably the activity I see the most amount of organizing for in server chats, where people are trying to get groups together to cut down the flow and fuse trees together. Cutting down trees is pretty much the same thing as mining, and I generally have the same thoughts. But the other activity under the foraging umbrella is foraging for plants, which is super cool. There are a ton of wild plants around the world that you can pick up in different environments. Some are rare, so sometimes you see people tell others in server chat where the rare plant is. And overall, nothing too special about this one. And the eighth and final skill is furniture crafting. Similar to cooking, this is a skill that I have spent the least amount of time doing. I feel like the skill is one of the ones that you do a little bit at the start of the game, and mostly focus on it later after you have progressed other areas of the game. Overall, it seems pretty good. There's a super fun mechanic where after you make a unique piece of furniture for the first time, you get a pop-up that will let you pick one of three random recipes for a new furniture item, where you only get to see a highlight of what the item is, so it's a mystery and you have to guess what it maybe is. I've loved this so far and I'm excited to collect them all. There are also a lot of different furniture recipes you can find around the world, and then of course there are a ton of other pieces of furniture you can get outside of this system. This isn't really under any of the skills, but I'll say it here that the refining process is super cool. I love all the different crafting stations and animations along with them when you are cutting wood and making ingots and whatnot. A lot of people have issues with the time it takes to use these different crafting animations, which I'm probably going to talk about in another video. And all the skills are interconnected. I mentioned that cooking will give you food, that gives you focus, that increases the experience you gain for all 8 of your skills. You can cook things you forage, garden, hunt, and fish. You rely on foraging and mining to upgrade all your tools into better versions, you use wood and stone in order to make furniture, and so on and so forth. Overall, I really love all the skills in Palea, and think they did a great job with implementing them. I do have several issues with some of them, as I mentioned throughout each one, and I hope some things get changed to address those issues, but overall, skills are a great part of the game, and I love them. Now with all the skills out of the way, let's start talking about some of the other areas of the game. First are all the characters of Palea. I've said this multiple times in streams, and I believe I mentioned this in my first impressions video, but I'm loving the NPCs around Palea more than I thought I would. I've always loved getting to learn about characters in games and building relationships with people. It's one of my favorite parts about different games. When I played Stardew Valley for the first time, the first thing I completed before anything else was maxing out my friendship with every single villager, and going into Palea, I thought I would love them, but it is so much better than I thought. Some people have complained about there being a lack of NPCs around the world, but in my opinion, it is perfect. There's a good amount of characters present in Kilima Village, and I feel like there's a lot of activity going on. I do wish there were more NPCs in Bahari Bay, and I would love to see the central area of that map have a few NPCs added to it. Maybe a tavern keeper and a repair person added to it, and maybe let the current NPCs that live in Bahari Bay go visit the tavern there as well. But as far as Kilima Village and all the NPCs currently go in the game, there's a lot of depth to each one of them and there's a lot going on. There are a ton of relationships, drama, and so on between each of the characters. There's a ton of story connected to each character. Each character has a very unique personality and a very unique purpose in the world. And there are a ton of fun quests with each character that I'll talk about in a moment. But overall, I love how the different NPCs have been added to the game and I'm so excited to get to learn more about them. Where there are a ton of quests connected to each NPC that you unlock more of as you increase your friendship with them, and there are also a bunch of quests outside of that, where I see two major quest lines playing out right now. One that has to do with the world and humans, and one that has to do with you finding your place in Kilima Village. And beyond that, I am not going to spoil anything else going on with the quests and the story, but I will say that I absolutely love the lore, world building, and stories that are being presented. Those three things are some of the most important parts of a game for me, and I am engrossed in Palea's. I'm so excited to continue exploring the quests I have not yet completed, as well as any quests that may be added in the future. But when it comes to the content of the quests, I am pleasantly surprised, where the quests are super fun. I love the different tasks that people ask you to do, I love the puzzles I've explored thus far, and just everything else. All the quests feel pretty unique, where even fetch quests feel like they have meaning even though all you are doing is going and collecting 5 flowers or whatever. Out of every game I played, Palea's quest design is one of my favorites, and hopefully it stays this way as I get to future quests. One quick note is that I have noticed a few grammatical mistakes in some quests, which would easily be fixed by a QA pass over in order to polish the game for release, and is not a super big issue for me. And then of course, we have the world itself, where I absolutely love the world of Palea and the two zones we currently have in the game. 
I love exploring in video games and I think I have spent the most time and attention to exploring every nook and cranny of these two maps than I have in many other games. For one, there is a lot of stuff in these two maps and I have not explored everything even though I have been playing non-stop since the closed beta began. And two, the quality of the content here is pretty good. There are a ton of secrets, cool beautiful areas and so on that you can find across both maps. And the maps themselves are incredibly important because every area of the game revolves around the maps. All of your skills require you to travel through the maps, NPCs and quests exist in maps, and so on. So it's definitely super important that the maps are of a high level of quality, and I think they did a good job with designing them. However, there are two fundamental issues that I see with maps. The first is that there are only two of them. Now the incredibly important caveat to this is that this is a beta, and with the amount of content present in these two maps, there's more than enough to do right now. But as I eventually begin to complete all these maps, at the end of the day, there will only be two. But again, this is a beta. We'll talk more about the issue of what a beta is in a bit, but it is expected by many people that we won't have the full roster of maps until the game is released, because this is just a test version of the game, where I am hoping and expecting that we will have many more maps released with the game releasing, where I am personally hoping that we will have somewhere from 6 to 10 maps with the game releasing. The second fundamental issue is while there is a ton of attention and quality in the map, the general sculpting and decorating of the map leaves a bit to be desired where there are a ton of issues with floating trees and rocks and weird spots in the landscape that show a general lack of polish, where when the game releases it is generally expected that all of the floating objects and whatnot will be fixed and it would definitely be disappointing if that is not the case come release. Another huge part about Paley is housing, and I have spent a decent amount of time working on my plot, but when it comes to building up a large house and decorating it exactly how you want it, it is definitely in-game content where you will be playing with a little bit at the start of the game, but you will mostly be focusing on it later on. As such, as I am still early on in the game, I have not spent a lot of time playing with housing, but the bit that I have spent playing has been phenomenal. I built several rooms and I have seen all the different ways you can put them together and some of the customization you can do, and it's fantastic. I have spent a little bit of time decorating, and it is also fantastic. There really is a lot you can do. However, there's a lot of options missing that I would love to see in the future. To highlight a few, I would love to be able to move the mailbox and shipping bin around my plot. I would love if there were paths so we could create like stone paths that you can lay around your plot. I would love to be able to turn my garden plots into beds where they have wood or stone around them, and I would love to be able to have multiple stories to my house. At least a second story where you could have a stair or ladder heading up, and then maybe an option to cut out half of the top floor to turn it into a balcony that looks down onto the bottom floor. There's a lot of stuff you could do here, and I'm expecting that everything I said will eventually make it to the game because there seems to be a lot of interest and demand for it. But overall, housing has been incredible so far, the grid system is absolutely phenomenal, and any game looking to add housing should model it off of Paleas. And the last big thing in this part of the video that I want to talk about are the social systems, and this is where we start to get more into my criticisms about the game, but there are still a lot of good things about the social systems in the game. Where I talked about all the skills previously, and other than hunting and furniture crafting, working with other people is incredibly important with all the skills, where you will have an easier time getting stuff, get more stuff, get stuff faster, and so on, by working with other people. Where for the most part, you would do just fine doing it by yourself, but it's incredibly beneficial to work with other people because of everything I just said. Because of that, I've had a ton of fun playing with my friends. We're constantly grouping up and wandering around together to do all these things. I also see people grouping up all the time in server chat, and I constantly see people running around together to get things. Which the server chat is also super alive. I consistently see people talking to each other, both seeking for help and just random conversations. This game is definitely a great social experience so far, and I've loved the conversations I've had with people. And I've loved grouping up with random people to go do things around the map, and I've just had a great time interacting with people. I constantly see people everywhere I go, and the world honestly feels alive. I have seen some people on social media talking about the opposite of what I've just said, and honestly it makes me feel a little crazy because of how wildly different my experience playing the game is, where they talk about how they don't see people talking or grouping up or anything else, and that could not be more different from my experience. I'm not sure if they are straight up lying, or if I have just been lucky with the people I've been interacting with, or if I'm just someone who likes to play MMOs because of the social aspect so I'm actually engaging in it, or a combination of these, but I've had a great time playing in this active world with lots of people in it. Of course, there are quite a few issues, so let's talk about them. Beyond the skills and interacting with other people to talk and run around together, there's not much going on as far as the social side of the game goes, and this is definitely an issue, where there aren't many other cooperative activities, and I hope they add more in the future, and I think it will be necessary for them to add more. One idea is mini-games, where maybe you could play board games with other people, 
be it real life board games like chess that we already know, or fictional ones like the one we see at the end. Or stuff like a trading card game, which is like a whole game inside of a game like we see in The Witcher 3 or Elder Scrolls Online. Or maybe semi-competitive activities like racing or glider challenges or jumping puzzle races or hunting competitions or fishing competitions. There's really a lot of different activities they could add around the road that would add a lot more opportunities for people to engage with other people in, and I personally really really hope that we see stuff like this in the future. There are also a couple of critical issues with the chat feature in the game. The first is that chats are wiped when you transition from one zone to another, where if you go into a new zone you can't read what somebody just said, or maybe someone sent a message as you were entering the zone entrance and now it's gone. This is definitely annoying when it comes to server chats, but it's horrible when it comes to whispers, party chats, and community chats, as you can talk to anyone anywhere in the world in those chats. Well, I hope they change this in the future, and it seems like a bug, so most likely will be. Additionally, there's no say chat in the game, which is incredibly detrimental to the social aspect of the game, where there is server chat, which is for all the people in the zone, and that is great and you see people chatting all the time, but it feels awkward to send a message addressed to an individual or a small group of people in a server-wide chat. Or maybe if someone passes by helping me mine a copper vein, I could ask them and say chat if they want to run around together, or if I'm hanging out at a spot in town, I can talk to people directly in front of me instead of the entire server, and so on and so forth. There are so many different scenarios that say chat is perfect for, but we just don't have it in the game, and I really hope we see it. Furthermore, while there are a bunch of emotes, there is room for a lot more. I want an emote for literally everything. In a game where you are interacting with other people, emotes are incredibly important because it allows you to have realistic interactions with other people in this digital world. Additionally, it can provide more opportunities for random interactions, like how you wave at people to say hi, you could add a beckon to say follow me, and there's just a ton of stuff they could add. Additionally, they could add some animations to the game. I don't think there's an animation to eat food, which is great for people who are wanting to eat food quickly to get focus, but it would be nice to have an optional emote or animation to eat food. You also can't sit in chairs, lay in beds, or lean against surfaces, which I think are crucial for this game. Being able to do all three of these would add a great amount of immersion to the road, especially sitting in chairs. And I've heard that the developers are planning on adding the ability to sit in chairs soon, but I think I've only heard that through random people, so I'm not sure how true that is, but I definitely hope it is. Another aspect of this game that is really interesting is the economy, and I have some mixed feelings on this. First off, there seems to be an imbalance in the ways you can make money, where the single most lucrative way to make money in the early game is via hunting, where hunting at the start of the closed beta was so lucrative they had to nerf it a little bit, but it is still incredibly lucrative, where I think a lot of people feel inclined to focus a lot of time on hunting to make money, which I have caught myself doing because it makes them the most money, where I think bringing hunting in line with the other skills is definitely a good idea to make the game more balanced. I am no expert on balancing economies, but my initial idea would be to very slightly raise the price of fish and bugs a tiny tiny bit, leave all of the prices for different items the same, and then make every skill be in line with fishing and bug catching. But again, I'm not a developer or a mathematician, and I have no idea what I'm talking about here. Additionally, you can't sell any furniture that you make, which luckily, furniture doesn't take up storage space, but I would definitely love to sell furniture that I have in my storage that I don't want to use. Additionally, this would open up the skill as a possible avenue to make money, as maybe the amount of money you get from furniture could be worth the value of all the goods you put into it, and a tiny bit more. A common criticism that I see is the lack of an interplayer economy. Think the auction house from World of Warcraft or the trading post from Guild Wars 2, where people really want to buy or sell things to other people, and this is a personal opinion that I have, but I am really, really happy that those don't exist in this game. In-game economies have been proven to be a complete failure in pretty much every game, and that's honestly one of my least favorite parts about both World of Warcraft and Guild Wars 2 for example. Additionally, it goes against the entire philosophical ideas of Palea, so I highly doubt it would be added to the game, but of course, a lot of people want it, so if you are somebody who wants it, just know that there's currently nothing like this in the game. But being able to trade materials with other people in the game would be great. They have a version of the system where you can request 4 sets of items per day that other players can give to you, but it's incredibly limited in both how many times you can do it per day and how much you get for each request. An additional issue with this is that fulfilling requests for people in your server instance is difficult because if you go to your house to grab an item and then return to the map you were in, it's likely you are on a different server and you can't fulfill the request. And there are some opportunities to give items to people like through cooking or by helping people build their houses, but there is no fleshed out trading system in the game. But I personally would love to be able to give items to my friends and receive items from my friends. Or maybe I need this thing, or my friend needs this thing, and we can help each other out. But a huge caveat to this is how it can start producing an in-game economy. 
Using Guild Wars, the original one, as an example, there are some systems similar to an auction house or trading post, but people have created an in-game economy via trading. Where there is obviously in-game gold, but people also use select items as currency as well. Where then every single item in the game has a value based on what people deem as its value, which fluctuates with the value of the selected currencies, and if in-game trading existed in Palea, this would be inevitable. Which then brings forth the issues around in-game economies, and also how Palea seems to shy away from that. But I think even if people want to be weird about items and trying to make gold in this game, and scream in the chats trying to buy and sell things, and support multi-million dollar corporations trying to manipulate economies to make real world money, being able to trade with other people would still be a good thing. Another super interesting part about Palea is the accomplishments, which are basically the achievements in this game. And largely, I like them. They are fun to work towards, and you get some pretty cool rewards. The weekly accomplishments are also cool. And again, overall, I like them, and as someone who loves achievements, I'm excited to get them. However, I think they are lacking in multiple ways, where there are a lot of different accomplishments they could add, like unique challenges or interesting mechanics that you wouldn't otherwise normally do. There could be an accomplishment to kill a chopper while falling from the sky, or an accomplishment to find various secrets, and so on. There are a lot of opportunities for creativity here, and I think the accomplishments that are currently in the game are fantastic, but I would love to see even more. Next, I want to talk about the camera feature in the game, and some ideas that aren't going to be super relevant to a lot of people, but are incredibly important to me. Where this game has a camera feature, and it is honestly incredible. This is the type of feature that I would love to see in pretty much every game. I've been requesting it for Guild Wars 2 for a while now, where you can set up your camera to take photos in front, and also to take a selfie of yourself or a group of people, where you can zoom in or out, move it around, and snap some photos. This allows a ton of creativity for taking photos and screenshots in the game, and it's just an incredible thing to have in the game. However, this is kind of the only option you have for taking high quality photos, and you can't take high quality videos with this feature, where there is no way to hide your UI in the game, so if you wanted to take a screenshot of the game without using this camera, and without having your UI on the screen, you're out of luck. Which also means, you cannot take any videos of the game without having your UI showing. For anyone who has watched a lot of my videos, you know that I love to take scenic shots of games. Where most of my non-Let's Play Guild Wars 2 videos will feature scenic shots of Tyria, where I hide the UI and showcase the beauty of the game. And I can't do that in Palea, which makes me sad. This game is absolutely gorgeous, and I am obviously going to show it off even with the UI on my screen, but I think it would greatly improve the quality of my videos, as well as every other content creator's, to be able to hide the UI to record some scenic footage of the game. Additionally, there is no way to hide your character model, where this game is obviously designed to be played in the third person, it works great like that, and I don't think it would be a good game if it was in first person. However, an option to go first person would be great to have, where for one reason, it allows people who want to play in first person to do that, even if most people wouldn't. And second, it would allow me to get scenic shots of the world without having my character in frame. Guild Wars 2 originally released without having the option to go into first person, which forced people to get creative with taking screenshots and videos. But they eventually added first person to the delight of every content creator in the game, and I'm hoping Palea will do the same so I can showcase how beautiful the world of Palea is. Another major issue with the game right now is how housing permissions work. Where overall, the system is pretty good, where you can make it so your house is private so no one can come, or you can make it so your house is open for people who are your friends in your neighborhood or are in your party can come over and visit, but those people can only visit if you are at home. And that is the most critical flaw in this system, where I think allowing an option for you to visit people's homes on your friends list and in your neighborhood while they are offline is good. I think one reason that is currently not in the game is to prevent one person from just watering everyone's plants while they are AFK, but personally, I don't see too much of an issue with that. If my fiance is working and asks me to go water some plants on her plot when she's not able to, I would love to be able to do that. I do that in real life. But the critical issue with this is when you are trying to have a multiplayer plot, where basically one person is the owner of the plot, and then they can let people they want to build the plot up with to come over and work with them. However, people can only come to that plot when the owner is present. So if you are trying to progress a plot while they aren't online, you can't. Or if you go out into the world to collect resources and you return while the owner is still out, you can't get to the plot. Or if you are working on the plot and the owner leaves, you are kicked out. This makes it significantly more difficult to work on the plot together because it requires the owner to be online and to be at the plot to be able to work on it together. Or one solution could be allow anyone to visit your plot as long as you are online, or the better solution would be to allow anyone to visit your plot whenever even if you are offline. Of course, this should be a setting that people select because people like having control over who can come to their plot and who can do what on their plot. And now, 
For what I see as the biggest issue in this game that has caught the most negative attention surrounding this game on social media, and it's the microtransaction systems in the game. Repalia is a free to play game that will eventually be available on multiple platforms, so the entry fee to this game is having a device that will be able to run it. All you have to do is sign up for an account, download the game, and log in. And like most free to play games, the company has to support themselves or else the company won't be able to support themselves. You have to put bread on all of your employees' tables, and you have to be able to keep servers online. If you don't have money, the servers will shut down and you can't develop a game. The most generally agreed upon way to support live service games is through a microtransaction shop where you can buy items that are purely cosmetic. Where you can spend a bit of money, get a cool looking item that you can show off in the world or decorate your character with, and support the company. Most people think this is fine as long as there is no pay to win factor involved, as in you aren't able to buy things that make you stronger than other people who don't buy it, and as long as there are no gambling factors involved. You get the item you want, not a chance for an item you want. And this is exactly the system that Paleo has is. There is currently a microtransaction store where you can buy outfits that your character can wear that are generally more fancy than the outfits you start with. Where outside of the starting outfit, there is a single outfit in the game you can obtain that doesn't require you to spend money and isn't available at the start of the game, which some people find an issue with, but I'm personally okay with. So most of the way you can customize how your character looks beyond the start of the game requires you to spend money, which I'm speculating that there will be more outfits you can unlock in the future, but currently, this is how it is. Additionally, there is a possibility that they may sell more than just outfits in the future, which is a whole discussion that we could have another time as people have different opinions on what should and should not be sold, but as of the closed beta, you can only buy outfits. The largest issue about the microtransactions in this game that has caught the most attention is the pricing model where outfits cost more or less depending on the specific outfit, where the more extravagant outfits cost more than the less cool outfits. Scrolling through the store, the cheapest outfit cost 850 Paleo coins, and the most expensive outfit cost 2550 Paleo coins, which to translate that to USD, well, that's kind of hard to do. 850 coins is roughly less than $10, and 2550 coins is worth around $25 with rough math. There are several issues with this. On the bottom line, there's a lot of discussion about how much outfits should be worth. A lot of people say that spending $25 on an outfit is ridiculous, which I don't fully agree with, but also don't disagree with. However, I don't think it's too bad given that I personally love Paleo, this is how the game is supported, the game is free to play, and because of my current socioeconomic status. Where for people who don't like the game as much as I do, or don't have as much money to spend on the game as I do, $25 for an outfit is insane to them. When we look at other games, specifically Guild Wars 2, an outfit in the game generally costs around $10, and it looks at the same level of quality as the $25 outfits in this game. However, I'm also spending a lot more money on Guild Wars 2 than I am in Palea because I buy each of the Guild Wars 2 expansions, or again, I'm not paying anything to play Palea. The game currently has 4 tiers of outfits that are at different price points. I would make the cheapest ones cost an even $5 USD which then becomes weird for other countries because of conversion rates, but I think USD is generally a good metric to go by given that this game is developed by a company in the United States. But then each tier will be an even $10, $15, and $20, where I think spending $20 on the coolest outfit in the store is very worth it, at least for me. But it also gives options for people to support the game by spending less money. Now there are two issues with the store that are even bigger than the pricing, where you need to buy Paleo coins in order to buy outfits and the pricing for Paleo coins is, in my opinion, absolutely horrible. Where 425 Paleo coins is $5, but you can buy more Paleo coins that gives you bonus coins depending on what option you select, and the amount of Paleo coins you buy is not directly comparable to any of the shop products. Where first of all, the amount of Paleo coins you can buy needs to be linear, where you should be able to buy 500 Paleo coins for $5, 1000 Paleo coins for $10, 2000 Paleo coins for $20, and so on. Having weird coin bonuses for buying higher packages of coins feels horrible from the point of view of a consumer, where then the even bigger issue is how none of the items in the store match any of the amounts of coins you can buy, where if you want to get an outfit that is worth 850 coins, you will need to spend $10 to buy the 425 coins twice, or spend $10 to get the 1000 coins and then have 150 coins left over, where if you want to spend those coins, you will have to buy more coins otherwise they go to waste. If you want to buy the 2550 coin outfits, which are generally worth $25, you have to spend $35, which will give you 3650 coins, that would then leave you with 1100 coins, which is 175 coins short of the second tier of outfits, or you could spend the coins to buy the first level of outfits and have 350 coins left over, when you would then have to buy more coins to spend on another outfit. 
This entire last minute of me talking about the pricing of the microtransactions and Paleo is leaving you super confused, that's because you should be. This is an incredibly confusing and convoluted system. Where in order to fix this, Paleo coins need to come in even amounts, and they need to be directly connected to the prices of outfits. Where if you go off of changing the prices of outfits like I talked about earlier, you should be able to spend $5 and get the $5 outfits, $10 to get the $10 outfits, and so on. You could maybe leave the bonuses for buying Paleo coins, or maybe if you spend $50 you get an extra $5 of coins, which could buy an additional $5 outfit. And then same thing with $100, but maybe $15 bonus, or something like that. Or best case scenario, get rid of the Paleo coins altogether and sell us the outfits directly. You could even keep them at the weird price points they are currently at, but don't force consumers to mess around with the wonky pricing and purchasing systems in order to get outfits. Charge my card $12.75 and give me my outfit. Now the final major issue with the microtransaction store are the bundles, where each outfit has three different versions of them which slightly changes how the outfits look. You can buy each one individually, or you can buy all three together in a bundle. Everything I've talked about in this section has been talking about the outfits individually, but should you buy all the outfits in the bundle, you can get all the outfits in a bundle for the price of two of the outfits. So this encourages people to spend more money to get all the outfits because you would technically be saving money, which brings up the discussion that would you actually be saving money if you only ever planned on using one outfit, but I digress. But a critical flaw with this system is that when you buy an item in one of the sets, the price of the next two items are cut in half each, which means the bundles don't actually exist. It's kind of false advertising, where there is literally a single solution to this entire issue that would solve everything, and that is to stop advertising the discount for the bundles. If we remove the display of the cost of all three items being crossed out and showing a discounted price of green, and just show us the discounted price, and then while we are on the topic of bundles, make the pricing equal proportional to what I suggested earlier. So if you want to buy a $10 outfit, let people buy the bundle of all three of those outfits for $20, or if someone buys one of the outfits, lower the price of the next two to be $5 should they decide to come back and buy it, and tell people in the store that this is how it works. So with everything that I've talked about in the store, here's a summary of what I think should be changed. Outfits should be priced at an even price point in USD, where there should be outfits worth $5, $10, $15, and $20. And you should be able to buy Paleo coins in those increments, or be able to just buy the outfits directly without the need of going through special coins. And that bundles should show how they actually work. Advertise that you can buy a full bundle for just the price of two individual outfits, and advertise that you can buy one outfit in the bundle, and buying future outfits in that bundle will be discounted should you decide to buy them later. I think if all these things get changed, the microtransaction store in Paleo will be phenomenal and one of the best in gaming, where this will provide options for people who want to spend a little bit of money to support the game, and still have more expensive options for people who really want to support the game and to also feed the whales that will inevitably exist. Where any future outfits should go along with this system, and should they decide to sell other items like glider skins, it should match the system as well. This will make the system better and not make it incredibly confusing for consumers and the people who love this game and want to support the company. Now the last major issue with the beta that I want to talk about is bugs and server issues. Where really, this is kind of a non-issue because the game is currently in beta and this company is brand new. Where a lot of bugs and a lot of server issues are to be expected. But I've definitely experienced a lot in my time playing. Where there have been some pretty major bugs that have caused people to have to reset all of their progress. Which is definitely unfortunate, but it is a beta after all. I will say, the experience has gotten slightly worse over the week where I've experienced more bugs and more lag with each new wave of players that have joined the closed beta, and the servers are definitely feeling the stress. This makes me nervous about the open beta because of the potential for the servers to become even more overloaded now that anyone can download the game, but I have faith that this will eventually be fine as Paleo is developed and they optimize the game and servers. There is the one idea that they are spending so much time focusing on making the server stable that it is taken away from other areas of development, and I'm not sure how true that is, and at the end of the day, I'd rather the servers be stable before we see more content added or changes introduced to the game. This does bring forward a very interesting topic that has been a major discussion on social media platforms in the last week. What exactly is a beta? Some people believe betas are a small fraction of a game early in development, where people can help test the game to find issues and give feedback before the game eventually releases down the road. And some people believe betas are basically 95% of what the final product will be, and we are testing the game out right before launch. And who's right? Well, both are. We see both types of betas in games, and Paleo is definitely the former. But this bothers a lot of people who think betas should be the latter, where they think what we should be playing in Paleo should be basically the complete product, but it is obviously not. There's still a lot of development to be done for this game, 
and it will most likely be in beta for quite a long time. So if you're someone who's wanting to play the complete product, you should probably wait for the game to fully release, because the immediate future will feature a lot of development and testing as the community works with the company to make Paleo the game Singular86 wants it to be. I definitely played in a wide variety of different betas. Most of the betas I play in are like the Paleo beta, where I played grounded during this development and the original release of the game was incredibly bare bones and a fraction of what the game eventually ended up being. And I played Guild Wars 2 betas for expansions, we're looking at the Path of Fire beta for example, we only got to experience a third of one of the zones of the expansion out of the total 5 that would eventually be released, and we only got to experience a few of the systems introduced in that expansion. Personally, I am glad I get to play Paleo in the beta and help out the dev team with making this game by giving my own feedback and also reporting bugs to them. I don't expect this game to be ready for a while, but I'm still going to have fun with it in the meantime. And a lot of people have a lot of opinions about the game, some people are incredibly constructive, and then you also have loud and annoying people that hate on the game mindlessly. There are definitely a lot of issues with Paleo, as I've talked about a lot in them in this video, but being rude to people is not constructive at all. While I hope that people who enjoy Paleo will offer constructive criticism of the game without mindlessly defending the game against people who don't like it, and I hope people who don't like the game won't attack the game or people who play it because they don't like it. I made a video about how cringe this is in the Counter-Strike and Violent communities, and I already see this happening in the Paleo community and the general gaming population. Which a final note here, this game is incredibly unique. It's going to be a game that some people like and some people don't like. The best way for you to figure out if you like it or not is to play it. If you don't like the game, that is completely normal and I hope you have fun playing the games you do like. If you do like the game, that is completely normal and I hope you have fun playing this game. Wish to speak about my future in this game, I am super excited to continue playing this game and to continue making videos. I have a ton of plans for different videos I want to make. Some videos I am planning in the immediate future is to talk about some of the big issues I talked about in this video but in more details, like the social aspects of this game or the timers that exist for example. And I hope anyone who watches those videos will enjoy them. Again, I'm just loving this game and I am excited for the future. And here we are at the end of this video. This is a long one. I've talked about pretty much everything in Paleo and all my thoughts on everything. There's a lot of stuff I love and a lot of stuff I do not love. I have quite a few criticisms about the game that I addressed in this video, and there are a few other small things that I did not mention which I hope to see changed in the future as well. But I think beyond all the criticism I have for the game, I really love Paleo. Playing this game for the last week has been some of the most fun I've had in any game in a very long time. I am completely immersed in the world, have not been bored at all, and I still feel like there is a ton for me to explore. And from what I've seen about the game and Singularity 6 for the developers, I have a lot of faith in the future of this game. Hopefully, as time progresses, that faith will have been well placed. If you really want my recommendation, it would be to play it. Like I said, this is the most fun I've had playing a game in a long time. I definitely suggest that you try it out. It's free to play after all. And if you do try it out and don't enjoy it, I definitely recommend that you come back one or two years from now and try it again to see how the game is further in development. This game definitely fits my needs and wants in a game, but it might not fit yours, and that's okay. I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Subscribe if you want to follow along with the development of Paleo, and have a good one everyone.